What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new, brilliant news Liverpool video because Michael Edwards is officially back at Liverpool and this marks a new era at Liverpool. The post Jurgen Klopp era begins with this announcement. Of course, Jurgen Klopp still can win three more trophies and I will cheer him on along the way. But in the summer, Liverpool will start a new phase, a new era, a new chapter in the fantastic historic Liverpool book, Liverpool FC history book and Michael Edwards returns to Liverpool to lead the post Jurgen Klopp era. Paul Joyce, one of the most reliable journalists, is reporting in the Times newspaper and we will also talk about the refereeing scandal involving Manchester City because a top journalist, Francois Plateau, spoke out about this uh, scandal and also Ian Wright finally on Sky Sports said that we have to talk about the elephant in the room when we talk about Manchester City and Pep Guardiola's uh, achievements, the 115 charges. And very few pundits, very few journalists mention the 115 charges when they talk about Manchester City. But I think every time you analyze Man City, every time Man City play a game, that should be mentioned. Every time Pep Guardiola is rated as a manager, it should be mentioned that Manchester City have 115 financial February charges hanging over their head and they achieved a lot of their success with financial cheating, financial doping. But that's the topic for the second half of the video. First, let's talk about Michael Edwards coming back to Liverpool. If you are happy about this news, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here and turn on the bell notification so you never miss the latest updates about Liverpool FC. I absolutely love this club. I've been supporting it since 2001. So if you are a Liverpool fan this channel is for you and if you are a football fan this channel is for you as well because we talk about various different topics. Michael Edwards will help shape the post Jurgen Klopp era reports Paul, uh, Paul Joyce at Liverpool after agreeing to return to a high profiled high powered role in which he will head football operations for club owner FSG. I already reported this uh, last week and this week as well. One of his first tasks will be to finalize a deal to make Richard Hughes Liverpool's new sporting director. I also reported this that Richard Hughes has a very close relationship with Michael Edwards. They worked together before and they want to want to want to work together again. So it was a big indication that Richard Hughes announced that he's leaving Bournemouth as their technical director in the summer that he wants to join Michael Edwards in whatever new adventure he's going on and that is at Liverpool FC and Richard Hughes is also a brilliant sporting director that Liverpool will hire from the summer. And what is very interesting is that Michael Edwards stepped down as sporting director two years ago at Liverpool and he initially even turned down FSG's approach when they wanted to rehire him after Jurgen Klopp's announcement in January. However, FSG rates Michael Edwards so highly that they sit down with him in person in the USA to actually discuss what it would take for Michael Edwards to come back to Liverpool in any capacity because Michael Edwards is one of the absolute top top uh, sporting directors and top uh, like football brains in the football world and certainly in European football there are not many people who are better at recruitment at analysis at like overseeing uh, club operations than Michael Edwards FSG didn't want to gamble and appoint uh, somebody who is uh, unknown at this level. We wanted the absolute safest pair of hands to oversee this transition, which is going to be the biggest and toughest transition for Liverpool in, in 10 to 20 years. You know, following a legendary manager like Jurgen Klopp, who is absolutely perfect for Liverpool, is a very, very tough task on many levels at the football club. So Michael Edwards uh, was given assurances that he will not just come back as a sporting director, but he will have a much, much higher, much bigger role. And that is now confirmed that he will be the head of football operations, which means that he will oversee 
the various football departments at Liverpool. So not just the recruitment side, the data analysis side, but many, many other aspects of the football club. And this gives me hope that Liverpool will hire the world-class manager Xabi Alonso or somebody who has, uh, you know, a similar talent. And I think the fact that Richard Hughes is, uh, has a close relationship. And what makes Liverpool's job easier in terms of hiring Xabi Alonso is that Richard Hughes knows uh, Chabi Alonso's agent because he is the same agent who has uh you know, the Bournemouth manager Iraola as his client and uh, Richard Hughes knows him because he has worked at Bournemouth. Uh, Iraola was hired with Richard Hughes as the technical director at Bournemouth so they know each other, Xabi Alonso's agent and Richard Hughes. So Richard Hughes coming in as sporting director, he already has a personal relationship with Xabi Alonso's agent so it would be so easy for Richard Hughes to approach Xabi Alonso's agent and Probably behind the scenes there are already talks uh, going on with Xabi Alonso to become the next manager at Liverpool. But Liverpool want to be very respectful to Bayer Leverkusen and to Xabi Alonso and of course to, to the Bundesliga title race. So they want to go public like Bayern Munich did of uh, trying to hire Xabi Alonso. And when uh, all parties deem it uh, fit and right they will sit down for official talks. Chris Bascom in the Telegraph newspaper said luring Edwards back to Liverpool is a coup for FSG. It's a big big plus. It ends a prolonged period of negotiation led by John W. Henry, the owner of uh, Liverpool FC and Mike, uh, Mike Gordon. Mike Gordon, another vital component moving forward, who remains in charge of club strategy. He was determined to bring Edwards back and he considered it of paramount importance, hugely important, given the huge void that will be left by Jurgen Klopp. And Michael Edwards has overseen the best period in terms of Liverpool's recruitment in the past 30 years. I'm pretty convinced that Liverpool's success is down to Michael Edwards and not just Jurgen Klopp, because Michael Edwards signed so many of the Liverpool legends that helped Liverpool become this absolutely monstrous, brilliant team who won eight trophies now under Jurgen Klopp because under Michael Edwards we signed Virgil van Dijk, Alisson, Sadio Mane, Mo Salah, Fabinho, Wijnaldum, you know, Naby Keita. The list goes on of the legendary players that Liverpool signed under Michael Edwards. There has been a big dan danger of uh, Liverpool losing a lot of their talent, a lot of the brains behind the, uh, the football operations, the brain drain as they call it, was a big fear for FSG because Jurgen Klopp taking his backroom coaching staff with him when he departs at the end of the season means that Liverpool will lose a lot of top top quality football people. And Edwards comeback means that those who have put the structures in place to ensure the coach had the tools to work his magic can appoint and help Jurgen Klopp's successor, the next manager, whoever that might be. Telegraph reported last Wednesday that Edwards' earlier resistance to a t return significantly softened following the last of many fresh Liverpool approaches and he agreed to a face-to-face -face meeting in Boston with John Henry and Mike Gordon to hear how his new role will be different from his Roslo, with his last role, which was a sporting director. Edwards has been one of the most sought-after sporting directors in world football since he left Liverpool two years ago. He has been approached by Chelsea, Manchester United and various other clubs, even Barcelona and Real Madrid. Liverpool tried at least twice to bring him back. His reputation follows a prolonged spell of successful transfer activity, both buying and selling players. The selling part is not highlighted enough. Liverpool sold Philip Coutinho for, for £142 million when we bought him for £8.5 million from Inter Milan and that £142 million and a lot of 30, 35 and 25 and 20 million players sales, 20 million pound player sales have helped Liverpool transform their squad. I mean the likes of uh, Christian Benteke being sold th for 35 million, Ward the goalkeeper who is like nowhere to be seen was sold to Leicester for like 15 million, Jordan Ibe was sold 
for like something like 15 or 20 million. Dominic Solanke was sold for like 25 million. And the list goes on and on and on. There were countless other deals which confirmed Edward's intuitive understanding on how to maximize value in the transfer market. Liverpool winning admiration for how they have stuck to their principles, often walking away from deals when the price was not right for Liverpool, as well as maximizing their profits from the squad players they have allowed to leave. Naturally, Edward's, uh, Edward's most important task alongside Gordon is to decide on the next manager. Xabi Alonso remains the favorite, but several other candidates are under serious consideration. And whoever the next manager will be, I'm now a lot less worried about Liverpool's future than I was when Jurgen Klopp announced that he's leaving and his whole backroom staff leaving was massive because we lose a lot of talent that way. So Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes coming back to Liverpool means we are bringing in a lot of new talent in terms of uh, the heading the football operations and on the sporting director level. So now we just have to get the manager right. And if we get the manager right, Chubby Alonso, the player recruitment will take care of itself with Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes in the building. I'm convinced Liverpool will keep signing very talented, young, hungry, promising players and also some experienced players like Vatarendo for 70 million was an absolute bargain. One of the signings of the season alongside Dominic Soboslay and of course uh, McAllister. McAllister for 35 million I think is the best value for money deal alongside Vatarendo as well. Liverpool were eager to finalize the key ex executive appointments before pressing ahead with formal approaches to those most suited to continuing Jurgen Klopp's outstanding work. And also hats off to Ian Wright who is one of my favorite pundits. He is an Arsenal legend and an Arsenal fan but he has a soft spot for Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp. But that's not why he said what he said on Monday Night Football. He is a man of integrity and he said you have to say it might be easier for Pep Guardiola in what he has done winning 15 trophies compared to Jurgen Klopp's 8. But Jurgen Klopp still got to get a lot of love. It's there for an anyone to see and everyone to see in, in terms of of trophies but we can't speak about Manchester City without speaking about the fact there's 115 charges around him it's around them it's the elephant in the room when it comes to Man City and Ian Wright wants that to be resolved so either Man City get punished or or um, they get away with the with the, the 115 charges which I hope they won't but there is a scenario where that could happen he just wants Man City's name cleared and Guardiola's name cleared because the players of Man City deserve to get credit because they have been incredible. Guardiola, for the work he has done, deserves credit. But you can't give them proper credit until there is 115 charges against them. And Ian Wright has a fair point. And also, Francois Plateau, who is a really, really respected journalist, he said that the referee Michael uh, uh, Oliver, who refereed in the Liverpool Man City game, has previously received payment for freelancing as a referee in the United Arab Emirates which I already reported multiple times since then he has been involved in multiple decisions which were very controversial head scratching decisions favoring Man City a club owned by the vice president of the United Arab Emirates Sheikh Mansour so the Man City owners directly paid Michael Oliver and Darren England the VAR referee in the Tottenham and Liverpool game who didn't give the Luis Diaz goal and he has been in the United Arab Emirates less than 24 hours before the game. Dan Cook, the assistant VR referee in the same game was also with Darren England in the United Arab Emirates. They all got paid by the Man City owners. The referees receiving payment from the United Arab Emirates consistently making the wrong calls in Man City's favor, that leaves a sour taste in opposition fans' mouths. The controversy continues to pile up for Manchester City, who are already facing 115 charges, inc excluding inflating attendance numbers to gain an unfair economic advantage. And more pundits and more journalists will need to speak about this because it's absolutely not right that they are, they are getting 
away with murder they are getting away with with everything in um, in this uh, english football world and i will use my platform and my voice to speak up against these injustices these financial cheating financial rule breaking and also a man city gaining unfair advantage on their competitors i mean all clubs should come together and protest against manchester city because uh, every single club has a responsibility to uphold the rules and to make others uphold the rules so yeah, let me know what do you think about this in the comments below. Fabrizio Silvano is also reporting that Richard Hughes will join Liverpool as part of the new structure and that is very very encouraging and very good news to hear. And also I want to highlight Richard Hughes, the sporting director, who was the technical director at Bournemouth, some of his signings. He signed Aaron Ramsdale for £800,000, so less than £1 million for Aaron Ramsdale and they sold him to Arsenal for like 30 30 35 million, Nathan Ake for 20 million, Solanke for 19 million, Jordan Ibe and Brad Smith from Liverpool for a combined 21 million, David Brooks for 11 and a half million, he has been brilliant for Bournemouth, Philip Billing for 15 million, Lloyd Kelly for 13 million, they have been really really good for Bournemouth as well, Milos Kerkes for 15 and a half million, he has been a starting left back for Bournemouth, Marcos Senesi 12 million pounds and he's now an established Premier League defender and Neto, their goalkeeper, on a free transfer and he also signed Alex Scott from Bristol City who has been pretty great uh, once he got fit this season. He also signed Callum Wilson for Bournemouth and Tyrone Mings who of course went on to become really established Premier League players. Callum Wilson now plays for Newcastle, Tyrone Mings plays for Aston Villa. So Richard Hughes is brilliant as a sporting director and I'm really looking forward to him working with Liverpool. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this, have a lovely day, see you later, goodbye!